Hello everyone and very welcome back to a Skogok Mark. I'm Joe Price and behind the camera today is Ida Olsen. Hello everyone. <laughs> We're just out for a very relaxed, very chilled stroll today in the forest. I got my forager's lens and I got my haversack with me with a few bits because I want to get up close and in detail about some of the things that we're going to be looking at today. I wanted to take a moment to talk about this little beautiful community that you see here in front of me, lichens, in particularly Usnia. Now, an awful lot of people get confused, especially when they're first starting out on their bushcraft journey, like myself, and think Usnia is everything that just looks like this on a tree. But Usnia is the family, the genus of bearded lichens that you see. So old man's beard is a very specific one in the Usnia family, and I'm gonna show you some ways that you can identify it. Now, before we start into the video and talking about how to identify Usnia and its uses, or old man's beard and its uses, lichen is a community, it's a, it's a whole biosphere in and of itself of uh, a lichen isn't a single organism like this hollow tube lichen here that you see on this branch going on all the way up here to all the fellow Usnias that it's sharing this branch with. It's a mixture of fungi and algae that work in a symbiosis to form these great little communities and organisms that you see on this tree. And from the Usnia blowing in the wind, Usnia is a very important bio-indicator of air quality. If you happen to be in a forest where Usnia is growing in abundance, you know that you're in a forest with pretty good air quality or in an in a area with good air quality. Now, when moving forward, this is a very powerful medicine when used in the correct way. It goes back to Norse mythology and other mythologies from the Northern Hemispheres have all used Usnia in various ways. A little tip if you want to take it on your herbalist journey, should you be out and about in the woods or getting into creating your own natural remedies, is to think about what the plant does, what the lichen does, what the tree does, what the herb does. So Usnia, as you see, <laughs> blows in the wind. <laughs> flaps about, does all its fantastic stuff. So that shows you, right? it blows in the wind, it, it's an indicator of air quality, what can it do? Well, Usnia is a great antimicrobial thing and it's fantastic for inflamed airways and infections and clearing phlegm, which is mainly what it was used for as kind of a cough medicine in a tincture, which we'll talk a bit about later on. But that's a nice tip to take away, that if you look at the plant and the plant's qualities or the lichen's qualities, you can associated with your own body in a mnemonic way and that's a very cool one so when you see the lichen blown in the wind you know it's for something like a swollen airway or for phlegm now when it comes to harvesting things like medicine usnia lichen i don't recommend taking anything that you don't really need from the forest even if it does grow in abundance like it seemingly does here because everything here is all dependent on each other but think of herbal medicine the same way you would think of antibiotics from a doctor you don't take antibiotics all year round you don't wake up for breakfast to make yourself a cup of antibiotic tea because it smells nice and you just drink it if you happen to be in the wilderness or you feel this coming on or you live remotely like myself and Ida, use it when you need it and that way the biosphere can stay on top of it you don't need much of it to make tinctures so that's something to bear in mind when moving forward treat the medicine like it's medicine but let's get right into looking at some of the features that comes with Usnia that you can harvest from fallen branches and stuff on the ground with some examples. So we've gone for a bit of a walk in the woods and we're chilling down here now and I got some examples from branches that have fallen on the ground. There's an awful lot of trees down here and these are some dead branches that you can see the bark is falling off and the Usnia itself is starting to die. Now this is the type of Usnia that you don't want to find. This one here as you can see in the sunlight is super bright super vibrant you know and we'll talk about more about that in a second the usnia here has started to fade away it's starting to go brown at the ends where it attaches to the branch and it's substrate you'd have to do an awful lot of garbling with this garbling is just a fancy uh, herb nerd way of saying removing all the bad stuff from it you know what i mean think of gargling <laughs> so we're going to have to garble a bit here to take all this stuff out and that's going to be an awful lot of hassle but should you choose to remove usnia from a branch because where it attaches, it's got these tiny, tiny tendrils. And if you were taking it off a fresh branch, you'd be bringing an awful lot of bark with you. You'd be bringing an awful lot of this hollow tube um, lichen with you too. So you can simply just take your knife and don't go right down to the substrate. Just take a big sweep of it, like you were combing your beard. <laughs> take a big sweep of it and just pinch it off. And you can see it comes away super loosely. And then you only have a small bit of garbling to do at the end. You can even make a incision there if you want. So that's how you would take it off. You don't want to rip it off or pull it off or disturb any of the other lichens on the branch should you be taking another little piece. And 
universal truth garbling has to be done all the time so just go through and make sure that you haven't got any other leaf litter or anything in there for when you get back to make your tincture so here you can see from this fallen branch that there's an awful lot of healthy usnea on here but we don't know which lichen is which like this is uh, dying usnea up around here but this could also look like horsehair horsehair is another type of usnea that grows really long and really brown that could be a small one i don't know maybe you don't know you know so you don't want to be taking all this stuff home with you but there's some very easy identifying ways and i want to sh show you the universal way to spot not just usnea but old man's beard the one that you're looking for so i'm going to ask you to join me in really closely and i'm going to show you something cool so here we have our healthy-ish usnea from our fallen branch it's a little bit on but we'll look at it this way so what you want to do is spread it out to see these individual tendrils and as you can see usnea is very tough it's got an awful lot of cellulose and fibers in it so when it comes time to process this you really want to crunch it up put it in a pestle and mortar slice it finely to break up these shield walls although it doesn't look it this little plant or this little uh, lichen is actually super 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 tough so don't just try and throw it straight in there really take your time to process it down but how do we know that this is old man's beard the old man's beard that we're looking for well the one thing is elasticity <clears throat> what i mean by elasticity is if you take a single fiber and you start to stretch it it'll have elastic properties you can see woo, woo. And you can see it's stretching out there. Other bearded lichens don't do this. They just snap. But Usnea, old man's beard, the one you're looking for for your medicine, it does that. So you just take your individual strands, give them a bit of a stretch, and you'll see. And it also tells you the healthy quality of your Usnea, because if you take some of this dead stuff, you can see the examples here, there's a lot less hairs on it that elasticity is gone and this will also tell you how fresh your usnea is but also that it is the usnea that you're looking for so there you have it forest family that's just a quick introduction to usnea in particularly old man's beard we'll leave some links to how to make tinctures because there's various ways of making tinctures below but also some science articles that you can have a look at to also its other properties both in Swedish and in English but the three things to take away from this video in the world of universal truths is to check for that elasticity check for those fibers that way you'll be better at identifying usnea and the better of a herbalist you can become the better you are for the biodiversity around there because you won't be picking what you don't need two it's antibiotic, it's a medicine. We don't drink antibiotic teas with our cereals in the morning, so we don't need to drink usnea with our toast. When you get sick and you need it, that's when you go and search it out. When you go to search out medicine, one thing that you can take away for your entire journey of foraging is to anthropomorphize trees and plants and stuff with human uh, traits especially human traits that you can identify with so for me usnea is about air quality it's about blowing in the wind it's light it grows in windy valleys so to me that's all about the airways it's about antimicrobial properties or antibacterial properties for clearing the airway clearing phlegmy noses runny noses sore throats so that's how i'm going to use it it's a still a beautiful day here and i still have some foraging i got my forager's lens like i said with me and i'm going to go and look at some fantastic fungi as spring is finally here so until next time forest family please like comment subscribe tell me what you thought of the video and other videos you'd like to see and we'll catch you in the next video peace